You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. And we are going to go straight to the issues that we have for discussion uh, today. And we are looking first. We have sufficient time to attempt exhaustively to try to see if we can terminate the debate today about comprehensive sexuality education. Is it a case of misinformation? Is it the case of lack of information? Is it that the education ministry itself and those that are responsible for the sector, the Ghana Education Service, and the allied state statutory bodies are the ones responsible for the confusion that is leading the President of the Republic to call the clergy, religious leaders, to a meeting this weekend to seek to clarify and to state clearly government's position on this matter. Let's begin from the education minister Matthew Opoku Prempe making an announcement in February about this particular subject during a launch. And we will hear him speak again, and it will appear that he brought some contradiction upon himself. Then we'll get to know the details of the CSE. We'll hear the minority in parliament, led by Haruna Idrisu, also speaking, doing a clearly political job. But they will insist it's a fair job to do. We'll then listen to Reverend Professor Frimpong Manso, Ghana Pentecostal Charismatic Council, state emphatically that they are against what they claim is demonic, a demonic agenda. And finally, we'll hear the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams also say, let's hand this sexuality education to parents. My parents never spoke to me about sex. So how exactly would parents also do this? So let's listen to them. We'll be right back. The subject of sexuality education has become a very important matter, particularly for the youth in our societies. Indeed, the changing societal context, characterized by the free flow of information, media pluralism, and the social media, has necessitated the need for education systems to provide accurate information of sexual, sexuality education. We in Ghana have a guideline that I've shared with you that we see it is imperative if this nation should develop that sexuality education should be part of the curricula that we would launch this year in September all the way from kindergarten to senior high school. Let me congratulate UNESCO and partners for the timely nature of this high-level dialogue among ministers of the, four, of the four regions, Eastern, Southern Africa, Western, and Central Africa, to shape the discourse and the implementation of comprehensive sexuality education in Africa. Ghana has long recognized sexual and reproductive health education as a conduit for addressing issues affecting the youth in this area. Originally provided by elders and other traditional leaders in community, aspects of reproductive health education were introduced in the school system with the advent of formal education. And we, were launching, we were launching a program of UNESCO. That program is not comprehensive sexual education. It's O3, our rights, our values, and the third O. And our world or something. That is it. Our rights, our values, our rights and our world. That is a program that if you read what you read carefully, everybody heard sexual and reproductive health. In Ghana, the minister that represents UNESCO on behalf of government is education. At that program, all the ministers, about six ministers, were in attendance for UNESCO. Sanitation, because they are there. Health, because they are there. Uh, and other ministers, tourism, because they are there. Gender, because they are there. UNESCO has a broad range of activities. 
So UNESCO comes to launch a product here. So that adolescent and reproductive health, if you leave here now and you go, you will get a document on adolescent and reproductive health. That includes sex education or sexual education. As somebody said, the name comprehensive is what people are battling with. Sex education has been part of the curriculum in Ghana since the 1940s. In fact, today, one president of FIDA said that they have been going around with UNICEF in communities on this sexual and reproductive health. That is also education. It doesn't necessarily mean that the curricula for running schools includes comprehensive sexual education. They are totally different. If the Ministry of Health or for that the Ministry of Information goes around and in, 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 uh, is, is educating the public on our civic rights, does it mean that civic rights is in my curriculum? It may be, but it doesn't mean so. So people should get the distinction because this distinction has a difference. That document that has been done by PPAG, UN, uh, UNFPA, has got nothing to do with the curriculum we are running as Ministry of Education. So when the National Population Council or uh, UNICEF or, uh, or UNFPA or PPAG has a document to do with comprehensive sexuality education, it does not mean that the curriculum, standard-based curriculum that we have rolled out in school does contain comprehensive sexuality education. The fact that United Nations or UNESCO or UNFPA or UNICEF supports comprehensive sexuality education, just like other countries, there are certain rights that are legal. It doesn't mean that those rights are legal in Ghana. And the fact that we all belong to UNESCO and UNESCO promotes an agenda, it doesn't mean that when you come to Ghana, we do it 100%. That is what you got, the distinction you got to get clear. That when people wanted to promote something that was alien to Ghana, Ghana said, in this country, that is not allowed. And I'm saying that, I'm happy that you said it was uh, Population Council and UNFPA and PPAG that are circulating drafts. Even if somebody develops a draft policy document, it has to go through an approval process. And it will go through an approval process. And it doesn't mean it will be accepted. Important documents going around as part of comprehensive sexuality education. It's not owned by the Ghana government. It's not owned by the Ministry of Education. We are taking judicial notice of the pathetic attempt by the Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Matthew Boku Prempe, at the press briefing on 1st October 2019, to deny government's involvement and complicity and its active implementation of the CSE agenda. Yeah. We want to draw attention to some matters that is important for you that you focus on as a media. That's known and available to us. Indicate that it is being funded by a Swedish government which has so far committed 22 million United States dollars for the initiative. The Ghanaian government has already assured her international partners that they will do everything politically possible, I'm quoting, to overcome social resistance and operational constraints. God forbid. As for this, the threat of age is not only inappropriate, but threatening that the moral socialization of our children will be left to right morals unknown and unacceptable to us as a Ghanaian people. So as for this, we will resist it. We will resist it because it will amount to some moral and cultural terrorism if it was to succeed. We are also aware that government and the UNFPA have entered into an agreement for the UNFPA to provide CSE technical support to the Ghana Education Service. So when they wake up and say that they are not aware of it, they have an arrangement with the United Nations Population Fund for them to provide 
technical support for the sexuality education curriculum. Additionally, we are aware, so you can put it in contrast, it is not as if we are unaware that they have signed a contract with CSCE Project Implementation Officer operating from the UNESCO Ghana office. They are denied by the minister, therefore, is not only naked, but is inconsistent with the truth. We are also aware that the Girl Child Education Unit of the Ghana Education Service organized a one-week workshop at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for training of trainers for the implementation of this particular CSA. This, this workshop is here. It was held from 26th to 30th August 2019 and was addressed by Deputy Director Lawyer Barton on behalf of the Minister for Education. So when they wake up and they want to speak with a double tongue on this matter, it is only you, the media, which must do a much more thorough journalistic investigation to indicate where they stood few months and a year ago, and where they are seeking to belong today. Parents must take responsibility when it comes to sex education. We shouldn't leave it to the world or the schools to teach our kids sex education. We have to teach them based on the rules of our kingdom. And we shouldn't allow the world to impose their method or their principles uh, of sex education, mm. you know, and I think that we should watch that very carefully. Uh, they shouldn't impose that on us. Mm. Uh, we are not going to conform to the standards of this world and what they call sex education if it violates our belief system. We will not conform to that. Mm. Some have said that there's too much controversy around the subject, so let's just go back to what was, where no one had a problem in the first place. Would you subscribe to that? Yeah, I'll subscribe to that. I mean, mm. we, we have to be very careful, uh, especially as uh, uh, our society here, mm. uh, in some of the things that come from uh, other countries, you know, uh, as education. We must look at our tradition, our culture, and see what works for us in the light of our tradition and culture. Mm. So like you said earlier, it will be best for us to reverse to the old methods that we were using in that curriculum for teaching sex, sex yeah, education. Yeah, when it comes to sex, it's not even an issue of their schools. Okay. It's, it's, it's the responsibility of parents. Mm. The parents must take responsibility when it comes to sex education and the upbringing of their kids. We can't leave that to teachers. Mm. And, and the church has a role to play, like the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he must go, and when he grow, he will not depart from it. So we have rules of engagement that okay. governs our children and our family, and how our kids should be raised, and the way they should go, which is different from the way the world sees it, and the way the world handles it. So they shouldn't come and superimpose their way of doing things on us, because we belong to a different kingdom from them. There's your total Redrawal, annihilation, destruction, expunge of that idea. It should be out of the vocabulary of Ghana education system. We do not want it. But going forward, we are saying that never again. So what has already secretly been crept into a book, the paper you are reading, page 11, the primary one to say there, the statement is dead. So we can't question it. Parliament, it was put on Parliament. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, so Mr. Speaker had it. Yeah. It was debated and discussed and the thing was passed. Parliament, as a representative of the people, as a matter of urgency, should commence the relevant parliamentary process to review the aspects of the 2019 budget statement that committed state resources to funding this controversial CSE by ensuring that 
it is redrawn and that no funds are expected on this policy. May I make the proposal that if government will not give us the school, then there should be partnership. They take the hardware and we take the software. They can build for us, they can pay the salaries, they can do the infrastructure, of course we will help. But the moral training and the upbringing of the children should be given to the churches to control and have authority so that we, we will bring out good, matured people in society. Right. My guest this morning, Abdul Malik Kweku Bako, is editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Professor Audrey Gajapo is Dean, School of Information and Communication Studies, University of Ghana. Dr. Prince Ama, Prince Hamid Ama, is Executive Secretary of NACA. I'll explain that to you. And Eduji Kujo Temeklo Godwin is a lawyer and member of the NDC's National Communications and legal teams. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to News File. Thank good, you. Morning. good morning. Right. So I'd like us to start on this note. And I want you two to relax and to deal with these two political animals <laughs> and how they have assimilated all the discussion in the course of the week <clears throat> and hope to come to you, particularly, uh, Dr. Ama to help, help deconstruct or reconstruct and try see if you can resolve the confusion for us. And of course, as a parent, not only as an academic, but as a parent, Professor Gajekpo will also assist us to understand the focus of the church that says, leave this matter to the church and to parents. So what is it that you have understood in this discussion in the course of the week that you took up as a party and a caucus in parliament to now render a position as we had Haruna Idriso do? Well, let me start by saying good morning to you. Good morning to Dean Audrey Gadepo. Um, my good senior here, Abdul Malik Kukubako, and uh, Doc here. In your initial introduction, you wanted we the political animals to resolve the matter from the political perspective so that persons within academia, it may well be that my brother Doc, who possibly today is vying to be an MP on a particular political party, may be wearing two hats. You understand. So we can also do a broader conversation around. Why do you <laughs> always <laughs> muddy waters? You politicians. Oh, no, it's important that these conversations we put it okay. in proper perspective. And, and, and it's also but important to note that the people who listen and watch this show <laughs> are very discerning. Absolutely. Okay. Exactly. When you are doing and, and unnecessary you know, propaganda <laughs> politics, they will know. Exactly. And if you are doing a job as an expert, as a professional, I they will agree. also know. And in fact, that right. is one of the reasons why your mm. show is watched by a lot of people. But I think that the conversation around this comprehensive sexuality curriculum, that today the Ghana Pentecostal Council, through Professor uh, Frimpon Opuni, describes as a comprehensive satanic engagement. I strongly believe that we will not have gotten to this place if persons associated with the executive arm of government and their communication relative to this matter were forthcoming, were candid with the people of this country. This has become a problem because of what appears to be the lack of trust coming relative to communication <coughs> from government. And so government communication on this matter has been completely incompetent and untidy because you have a situation where your minister of education, the principal government 
agent relating to matters involving education now speaks to a UNESCO representative with other ministers and makes categorical statement to the effect that we in Ghana, we have developed guidelines on this CSE. And for that matter, he is encouraged by the participation from international organization, CSOs, among other things. And this was in February. And this was in February. Right. Now, somewhere March 15th, thereabout, maybe the 2019, this matter again goes to cabinet. There is a certain conversation at cabinet around the CSE. Now, proud to this, November 2018, the finance minister presented a budget statement on behalf of the President of the Republic of Ghana. Page 86 of the budget statement, paragraph 368, is clear on the fact of government commitment to the implementation of CSE and other reproductive sexual engagements mm. or initiatives. Paragraph 369. Sorry, 369. Mm. And so when you have all of this communication from government, then you have my learned senior, Moses for Amoni, and his coalition on family values, among other things. For the press conference, they said, listen, this CSC engagement, to our mind, is a subtle way of introducing values that are completely alien to the Ghanaian cultural value. And therefore, are calling on government of Ghana to immediately withdraw the entire CSE package of whatever form or description so that we can have a proper national conversation around it. So that at the point, all of us are clear that when within the Ghanaian cultural context, you say CSE, <coughs> you are talking about A, B, C, D. So that has been the conversation. And so when you have principal government agents speak to this, so 24th February, Sorry, 24th of September 2019, or earlier thereafter, the Minister of Education, in the midst of this Boha, hosts a press conference. And in that press engagement, says that, listen, there is no such thing like CSE, categorical statement. Now, when you take the minister's statement in February, relative to his statement in October or September, Clearly, you see a certain disconnect. And so when you are speaking to the people of this country and the principal government agents relative to education, double speak on a particular matter, speaks in the sense that you cannot immediately associate candor to his statement. Then, moral society, religious group, the chief <coughs> imam, Muslim community, will be up in arms. And so it is not as though the conversation is far-fetched or an alarmist conversation relative to this question of CSE. Senior, as we speak, we do know that the concern here really, really is about LGBT and their introduction of their concepts and what have you. We know that because of what appears to be our cultural okay. so apprehension. Just, just hold on a second for me. And you know he makes references to Moses Fuamoni, the lawyer who is now leading that group of, I believe, mostly Christian uh, community members against the LGBT community. And what he had to say about their interpretation of the document that has provoked all the, this discussion all week. Let's hear Moses Farmoni, what he had to say, and then we'll return to the studio.
Okay? We know that there's not even a single word for homosexuality because it doesn't exist here. So in a sense, we say we don't like it. So it is judgmental. That's what they say. And if you talk about it, you are being homophobic. So they want to change that perception. So the Ghana Education Service and all of you in education, don't get fooled exactly what it is about. I just wanted to establish that point. And your link is made by the color of the cover? Of course it is. It shows you why did, okay, they should change the color. If they don't, you try to change it and you will see. But it's not even the color. Go inside. I can give you pages upon page of things that are in there with the governor of Ghana. Well, I don't know whether it's a governor, but clearly it's been signed by uh, the director okay. of the director general of the Ghana Education. Mm -hmm. If you go through, this book is just a summary. Or yeah, what the green one is just exactly. A, yeah. Let me go through uh, the PPAG man. I hope he will come around. Let me go through some of the models. Oh, our friends for the PPAG <laughs> agreed to join us this morning, well, but they have changed their minds well, for I hope, reasons. Well, best don't worry. Them. We're going to have a forum. They can have their point and make it. But what we're saying is PPAG Ghana and it is Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana. Mm -hmm. They should have inbuilt in themselves the value system of this country and reconstruct whatever they are getting from outside to meet our own values in Ghana and in Africa. We are not against uh, foreign, uh, you know, organisation NGOs operating Existing in Ghana, here. but they must relate their values to what we have in okay. Ghana and in Africa. Now, let me go through a few mm -hmm. of the things. You see the models. Uh, age six, age six years. This is what you're going to teach. Uh, model three. Myself being a male or a female. My brother, is there any confusion about being a male and a female? Let me go. Uh, model uh, primary three, age eight years. Concept of gender, maleness and femaleness. What is the meaning of that? Good. Let's go to uh, age six, uh, primary six, 11 years. Look at the model. Concept of gender, norms, roles, and stereotyping. I will read to you the, the Ghana concept, and you understand what stereotyping is. And then go to JHS, age 12. Listen, it says, unintended preg pregnancy and abortion. It goes on to human rights, sexual and reproductive health rights. That's fine. Now, let's go to age uh, 13 years. Um, respecting gender differences, dealing with gender discrimination. This is clearly an LGBT topic. No, hold on. You let me finish. Let me go through, and then you 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 will begin to understand what I'm driving at. Then communication, direct versus indirect communication, because they add the capacity to communicate the values that they have then inculcated in you. So they start from age six, and then they go on. Let me look at the last bit. Um, uh, SHS, that is age 15 to 17. The models are gender and body autonomy. Uh, and then they teach about responding to gender-based intimate partner. Look, in no, uh, you know, uh, they say we're heterosexual. I don't even like using it. No normal writer that indicates a male-female relationship will use the word partner. This word is very much an LGBT word because they talk about partner, partners. You know, so the point I'm trying to make is then core and support issues of stigma and discrimination. That is at age 16. They will teach you about core and supportive and support issues of stigma and discrimination. Discrimination okay. against who and against who. So, look, I can go through session by session. This is the s standard uh, that they've given to us in terms of the basics, what they're going to teach. The devil is in the detail, my brother. And I'm indicating to the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of uh, uh, the Ghana Education Service that Ikrasimaka and Sumimwe, we will collaborate with them. We will share the information that we have. We will show them what is behind all of this comprehensive sexual education program. Thankfully, as you heard from the doctor, this is not new. Uh, there's a history provided about the Ghanaian cosmic way of training people in reproductive health, how to guard their ways, how to... In fact, puberty, the whole idea of puberty rights is to initiate our children from uh, adolescent, yeah. exactly childhood, yeah. into adolescence. Yeah. That is how our society has always been built. And I'm telling you, my brother, the reason why the LGBT movement is moving into education using the United Nations system. And this is all about money because we don't have money in Africa. So when they come to you, UNESCO, beautiful, wonderful ideas. We have money to fund A, B, C, D. You're going to take it. And once you take it, then you're going to run into trouble. Look, my brother, let me tell you, Ghana is not the only place that CSE has been introduced. It's been in Gambia, it's been in Mali, the Ni it's Nigeria, South Africa. All these countries have now recognized the effects of 
what it really means. And they are revolting against in Uganda. We will, we're going to have a press conference next week. We will show the videos so our people will learn. And I'm confident, and I'm going to repeat it. I have implicit confidence in the president of this country because he came to power with the battle is the Lord's. That's God's word that he came to power with. And I think that after we have exposed all of this, in the end, this whole thing will be thrown away. All right. So you heard Moses Fuamuni, and he was also referring beyond the contents of this particular document, the one I'm holding right here, which is the guidelines for comprehensive sexuality education in Ghana. And he premised uh, much of his analysis on page 11 of this document. And this guideline uh, has a foreword written by and signed by um, Professor Kwesi Opoku Amankwa, Director General. Not signed, I, I, I meant signed as in use of For a word. word. Mm -hmm. Okay, by, the, by Professor Kwesi Opoku Amankwa, Director General, Ghana Education Service. And they have a particular discomfort with a portion of it that says the children are supposed to be taught to be open-minded among other things, particularly about people's sexuality. And he read various portions on the modules um, from preschool, that is four to five years, and then the famous page 11 that you heard Professor Frimpon Manso refer to, um, also dealing with the other aspects. <coughs> then Moses Fuamoni refers to the bigger documents, which has forward uh, done by PPAG's uh, head and also Mary Stopes. And he says, this color, if you know the LGBTQ, as in the LGBT community, if you know um, their colors, he says, this color does appear to represent the LGBT community's um, colors. So part of the suspicion. It is know it, own it, Live it. Comprehensive Sexuality <coughs> Education Manual for Young People. All right. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. So mm -hmm. now that's Moses Fuamoni and what he had to say. No, so I never misrepresented him. Correct. So you are saying that you agree with him that there's a confusion created by the Government, duty bearers. Yes. And that confusion from his interpretation it's actually what is going to happen. It's a reality and not an imagination. Because, like I indicated, this conversation is not limited to Mr. Moses Fuamoni. Right. I'm saying that our traditional authorities, religious authorities, have all come into this conversation. And so their concerns at this point cannot just be a question of, say, alarmist voice voices in this conversation. They are saying that, listen, beyond this, you know, materials being in this document, government has taken an active step by first engaging teachers in what you call trainers of trainers programs and activities. I want to confirm from him, for instance, the resource guide for orientation of primary school teachers towards the implementation of revised curriculum for primary school. Is it coming from your outfit? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. good. And so this document provides primary one to primary six. And in this document, it talks about comprehensive sexuality education. And so my point is that when our Minister of Education denied the existence of this concept in the development of the revised curriculum. He was not candid to the people of this country. Two, it's important to make the point that beyond this document, teachers have been trained. In fact, as at 26th of August this year in Kumasi, teachers were actually called. 26th to the 30th. Absolutely. They were trainers of trainers. Absolutely. And there was, sorry, there was an intention at least for them to be trained so that they can go and impact. So we have moved beyond this thing just being in documents. 
to the stage of actual implementation. Also because if I have a situation where your 2019 budget... And the, and the brochure that, you know, was supposed to have been used or used for that training mm. from the 26th to the 30th um, speaks about introduction of CSC. And somebody was earmarked to do that, Mr. Aaron Adakwa. That and then so. there was CSC implementation and the role of stakeholders. That was to be done by the same person. And then there was formation and running of school clubs uh, appears to be associated with this. And that was to be done by um, one Miss Gifty, uh, is it? <coughs> Uh, so, 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 so right. I'm basically saying that on mm. the face of the document... The minister denied this, that yes, nothing had happened. Yes, on the face of this And the minister document, also denied that there was no this guideline. Absolutely. Okay. So I am saying that on the face of this overwhelming evidence that contradicts the claim of the principal agent of government in the area of education, stakeholders religious groups mm. will be worried okay and so they claim that this conversation ab mm. around csc is a question of alarmists it's a regrettable position we have taken mm. <coughs> if today government had come to the realization that there is an overwhelming opposition to the csc what you do is to eat your humble pie and say we are withdrawing it comprehensively okay thank you so hold it there hold it there now, Koku, I know that you have already also stated that you believe that this was self-inflicted because of lack of finesse in communication or lack of it at all from the duty bearers. Right. Um, let us know how you understand what we have been discussing the all this week. The observation you just made was not a substantive issue for me. Okay. It was what was giving emphasis by media publication. Yes, and what can I do about that? Yeah. Hmm. See, some people have transformed the CSE into a kaka motobi. Yes. A kakai. And they've invited us to interrogate that. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, you would treat that with contempt. But for public interest reasons, we need to go through the motions. This education by negative experience. Here we are. We are going to interrogate distortions, misrepresentations, misinformation. You use that word mm. in your introductory remarks. Suspicions. That's what we are going to interrogate. But it's a good exercise because it will help clear the air. See, I'll be honest with you. With all my research abilities and things, I had never come across CSE, even in literature, until recent. It was from Tuesday, with all the noise. Then I said, look, take time, do some research, educate yourself, get better informed. Then I realized that this whole concept, it's developed, evolved over a period of time. There's this research that was done by some international experts as well as some Ghanaians. The name that comes out clearly here is Kofi Iwusabu Asari. Yes, yes. It's, yes, and it was done in collaboration with the University of Cape Coast towards comprehensive sexuality education a comparative analysis of the policy environment surrounding school-based sexuality education in Ghana, Peru, Kenya, and Guatemala. Reading this thing broadened my horizons. Mm. And, and this I, is when? This, was, this research was done between April, October 2015. This published 2017 okay. by the research. Okay. So you said it, bro it broadened your horizon. Mm. Then I found out that indeed that concept indeed in their research they even said that because of the controversy surrounding the concept the definition of the uh, theory and all that they even though they were doing the research based on sexuality education comprehensive sexuality education 
opted any time they were referring to Ghana to say sexual and reproductive health education. Okay. But they still make it clear that they are doing it within the context, the broader context of comprehensive sexuality education. Then they trace the evolution in the 60s, 1960 to 1980. The emphasis was more on biological matters. That's the first phase. Second phase is shifted to population issues, okay, beyond human reproduction. That's the biological. The third phase, there was a paradigm shift, and that was between 1994 and 2000. The second phase was 1980-1994. The third phase is 1994 to 2000. The concept became a little bit more comprehensive and holistic. By 2000 to 2015, the emergence of AIDS, HIV, all those things came to bear on the whole matters. Mm. So, it moved further, and that's where comprehensive sexuality education was captured as a concept. But if you read carefully, you see that that is has embraced sex education, sexual and reproductive health education, sexual education, if you want to say that, and the sexuality education. It's become a comprehensive, a holistic concept. I got to know these things only a few days ago. <laughs> I didn't have an idea. But I knew you were going to place it here. Anywhere I went will be placed there. So I wanted to be a better informed person. So that's what we have been dealing with. And indeed, I found out that it's been here in, in this country all the time, in the different phases. Uh, let me read this thing, and I'll explain why I'm laying emphasis on this. This is uh, Adolescent Sexual Reproductive Health and Development, source book for teachers. It's 2015. Right. The so so the, the guidelines that we have in the, bro in the green book, so to call, is sort of an abridged version. No. Correct? Of this no. bigger book? No. That's okay. A different All right. Thing. Let's go. And permit me to read mm. for okay. very important reasons. Mm. Like millions of young people around the world, Ghana's adolescents and young people need accurate and mm. comprehensive education about sexuality. Mm and reproductive health to practice healthy sexual behaviors. As, main, as many young people approach ad adulthood, they face many conflicting and confusing messages about their sexuality. They are also inadequately prepared for their sexual lives, and this leaves them potentially vulnerable to abuse and exploitation, unintended pregnancy, and sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. Against this background, the Ghana Education Service continues in its efforts to prepare adolescents aged between 10 and 19 years, who are currently 31% of the total population of Ghana, to become healthy and responsible adults. Following the National Population Policy 1994, the Adolescent Reproductive Health Policy 2000, all, all currently being revised, and the Ministry of Education Strategic Plan 2010 to 2030, and this is critical, mm. a revised curriculum with integrated sexual, sexuality education, did you hear me? Yep. Has been rolled out from kindergarten to senior high school in all schools across the country. In Ghana, sexuality education is integrated across relevant subjects within the schools across relevant subjects, they repeated it, within the school curriculum. Right. So this is not a new, an entirely new animal mm. we are confronted with. Mm. And they said this source book is provided to empower the teachers to many, do their work. Right. Many, mm. many. The point about, look, okay. uh, and I, I brought this book out, mm. or I'm relying on it, not to say there's something essentially wrong with this book. Mm. Or the contents. Okay. So when it was this book authored? This, this is 2015. Book. 2015. Thank you. And in this one, the preface is signed by um, the Director General, Ghana Education Service, Jacob M. 
um, core. more core. Core is core. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and you go through it like we we can. I can't take the whole time. Mm. Factors influencing sexual drive, the sexual acts. These are teachers have to ingrain this to be able to teach mm. the students. So tell and us the points of reference to this book and particularly your emphasis on where they say a revised curriculum with the integrated sexuality education has been rolled out from KG to senior high school in all schools across the country. This is what GES and government of Ghana mm. through the Ministry of Education were saying at that point in time. So your emphasis as is that this was done as at as 2015? Yes, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Okay. Let people get me right. Okay, so can we make progress? I, I, I brought this into the public space mm. to underline a certain inconsistency and if you like hypocrisy, selective amnesia on the part of people who had been in government before, who had been policy makers and policy implementers, who ought to have known. I'm not talking about their communicators mm. in the wider space, who might not have known. But I'm talking of people who held government positions. Like Haruna Idrisu, who uh, addressed the press conference. Yes, I don't like personalizing. Mm. And he's somebody I like so much, so sometimes I'm hesitant in pinpointing him. And this is an honest admission mm. I'm making. But, but have, you heard, have you heard the suggestion that this clearly said from ages 10? Oh, first of all, if you go, there is this factor called age appropriateness mm -hmm. in terms of the topic. So the, the, which the topic to be taught, it depends on which category. Yes. And people went on social media and painted all sorts of things and gave us the impression that four-year-old kid will be made to see the vagina. Yeah. I wanted to say it in three. Hmm. Okay? You have said it. <laughs> and why not? That's my language. Yeah. That's comprehensive sexuality education. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I was taught to be shy about that. Yeah. Yes, all mm -hmm. of us. But I've realized that it was part of a certain cultural thing. Why, why can I not say, I say penis, but I can't say quati. Uh, can I interrupt? Please do, why minute? not? You said it was part of a cultural thing. But mm. at what point in mm. culture and whose culture? You see, because I okay. suspect that traditionally, mm. if we go back eh, to our earlier cultures, we were not shy about naming body parts what they are. I agree. It is the introduction of Judeo- Christian culture that taught us that certain things and Victorian values which are foreign impositions that taught us mm. that we must not discuss certain things the way culturally we used to discuss them. I, okay. I concede. <coughs> She's right. Mm. And in here, under chapter human sexuality, all that factors influence sexual uh, drive, sexual acts. Mm. One, heterosexual intercourse with penna, vagina, in penetration, and ejaculation. Ah, that's my favorite word. Pretty much your... <laughs> <laughs> Anal sex is the insertion of the penis into the anus. Oral sex is the insertion of the penis into the mouth or licking the vagina. Masturbation to excite the sex organs by handling, handling or rubbing for pleasure. Interferuma. I don't even know what that means. Penna rubbing between a woman's thigh for pleasure. Oh, okay. I should know about that. <laughs> we have learned. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please, the let me content finish. Content regulation, standard regulation uh -huh. that the NMC sought to promulgate, which the Supreme Court struck down. Yes. Ensured that if you had anything to discuss, to mention the things you are doing, you don't do it at this time. You do it late in the night. I see. We may have to I'm ignorant about that. I, I will say that <laughs> I still like belong that. to that culture. Can we be sensitive? <laughs> Can we be sensitive? And, sensitive this one. and not it's mention it's these things. Okay. Insertion of herbs <laughs> and concussions for dry sex. Brackets tightening the vagina. Sex with artificial penis and vagina. And this is here it's to guide teachers. Then the issue I realize our friends. So take away the fact that this whole phenomenon is not a new phenomenon. Then they go, but the new angle is that there's something like open-mindedness, uh, non-judgmental, non non mm -hmm. and all that. And look, it's legitimate for people to raise. If you don't understand something, you raise it. What you require is explanation to it. But before I do this, what I believe to be the explanation, in this same booklet, mm. 
2015 booklet. So in this, in, in the current one, yeah. the guidelines that Matthew Popu Prempe said had been launched, mm -hmm. which is this green thing, um, it had been said that the purpose of the guidelines is to help teachers and other stakeholders, such as community-based organizations, to provide appropriate training and support for young people, specifically to help them acquire accurate and reliable information on sexual rights and reproductive health, develop skills for self-development and decision-making, sense of self-confidence, assertiveness, ability to take responsibility, ability to ask questions and seek help and empathy. And here's the discomfort, discomforting part for these uh, groups and religious bodies. Nurture positive attitudes and values, including open-mindedness, respect for self and others, positive self-worth stroke esteem, comfort, non-judgmental attitude, sense of responsibility concerning other sexual and reproductive health issues. And yes. Most of the things you've read there, mm. this one is the 2091. Right. Are also here in the twenty fifty or at the twenty. This is somewhere twenty seven eighteen. Uh, yes, 18, I mean the 18, current. Yeah. yeah, but this is what we were told was an outdoor. We, we, yeah. He referred to us that they already that's have in, the February. in February. Yes, yes. yes. In that's February. The that's minister that's refer, made the reference that we have guidelines, and yes. I encourage. I was only looking for timelines uh -huh. so that yeah, he was referring to this, which Fine. is twenty eighteen. Yes, okay, most of the things you read are still here in the twenty fifteen one. Okay, assertiveness, negotiation. Overcoming the word, it's all here, mm. but significantly, if you come to the basis under empathy, contribute caring for others, critical one, tolerance towards people who are different. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. You see, and you ought to preach this and incorporate this in our kids mm -hmm. because we are all against mob justice. If I, somebody is a gay, I, I think, well, I've said it before and I'll be advised not to say, I think. It's a, it bothers on something, you know. <laughs> Why? There are too many women around. Why would I go for my fellow man? But that's something. But I ought not to go out there and attack the person because he's gay. We had a minister of state in the Mahama administration who publicly taught us that. And it's true. In the face of the law, it's the law that must deal with them if the law catches up with them. But you can't take up that uh, mission that because somebody is gay or lesbian, I must mete out justice to the person. You have to have that capacity to tolerate and let the law deal with those things if they are indeed infringements. So if I see tolerance towards people who are different, I'm not alarmed. Mm. And they being are not being taught. Being non-judgmental is no, used here. It's, it's the being non-judgmental no, used It's the same thing. I, no, but you, you can't get all 100%. But okay. I said some of them I've told you are there. Okay? So really, I don't get the point. They are not being taught to become gays. You are not being told that, look, emulate this character because he's gay, go out there and be gay. That's not what they are being taught. Okay. Can I Please do. I don't have a problem. It's, okay. it's not only a matter of respecting people's sexual rights in Ghana. So we've divided it into gays and non-gays. But we are also teaching our children to be open-minded and judgmental if they want to be citizens of this world. Not that they should emulate behaviors that go against their own convictions and their cultural norms. But if you go and you meet other people who have their own beliefs, you must respect that. Mm. We often talk in binary terms, male, female. But a lot of countries, recognize that there are people who are intersex mm. because it is a reality. Okay. It's a biological reality. Right. And sometimes it's a cultural reality. So when you go and meet those on? people, right. you must not be judgmental. Okay, let's get yes. to conclude. Yes. And, and my question to you was how you understood what was going on in the course of the week. I suppose what you're doing is with the, with the, with the, with the, with the benefit of hindsight. Well, I, st I made my first comment. Because Wednesday. it supposes I mean, that you have further and better particulars now than 
the issue yeah, began. Yes, I told you, I did not even know okay. about CS. All right, so I you didn't even know about conclude it. and let's get, let's, See, get, let's get to my left side. And to point out, that, and I'm saying that if the f discussion had been focused, mm. that look, what is CSE? And we all did the discussion dispassionately. I tell you, there will be no controversy in my candid opinion. This is a UNDP, a uh, UNESCO document, mm. 2015 to 2016 16. report. Mm. They're talking about their collaboration with Ghana government, Ministry of Education and Things in Ghana, and achievements. Mm. One of the achievements they listed is regional workshop on comprehensive sexuality to strengthen the capabilities of ministries of education, health, and culture on diversity and gender classroom activities. Mm. If you go to page 23 of it, I'll read and conclude. Mm. And that's why I would deal with why I think there's a deficit with the minister's communication. Okay. Comprehensive sexual education. It, they, they don't say sexuality, mm -hmm. but they say sexual. The budget thing that our friends have brought to the f uh, fore mm. also se significantly says sexual, not sexuality. I was even thinking it's typo. Because me, I don't see the difference. They are all now integrated, mm. strictly speaking. Now as, in, as in, when you say budget, as in Sweden expending... Um, no, I'm talking of the Ghana government budget. Ghana government, government budget, not the $20 million. No, 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 thing. no. Okay. But mm. even that, the way it's been distorted, I mean, mm. sometimes it's so difficult whether to even join the debate, mm. you know, in some of these you, things. You proceed where you are and finish. <laughs> yeah. mm. You know... This is the regional training course on strengthening the capabilities of experts. The headline is Comprehensive Sexual Education, Regional Workshop on Comprehensive Sexual Education and School-Related Gender uh, Violence. 20, it was held here 12 July to 17 July 2015. Mm. The regional training course on strength, strengthening the capabilities of experts from the ministries of education, health and culture to further in integrate models on diversity and gender classroom activities in comprehensive sexuality education was organized in Ghana. The workshop was organized to assist West African educational institu institutions to integrate diversity and gender education in primary and lower secondary classrooms, particularly in such a way that it is culturally appropriate and suitable for resource limited settings. The Minister of the Ghana Education Service, I have two letters here. One is dated 1st April 2019, the other is dated 29th April 2019. It says the management of education, Ghana Education Service has studied the guidelines for comprehensive sexuality education in Ghana and has agreed that in order for the guidelines to be accepted for use in Ghana Education Service, the phrase, quote, within the acceptable cultural values and norms of the Ghanaian society should be added to the third objective on page three. This was repeated in the 29th April one. Mm. Now, that is why I so had a little problem. So there's the 1st April 2019. And 29th April. And that one is, 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 is titled, Insertion of a Phrase into the Guidelines for Comprehensive Sexuality Education in Ghana. Yes, and the only difference here is they say a reminder. The same okay. thing repeated. All right. That's why I have a problem with government communication. Why are people running away from a distortion? Why are you reacting perhaps to the distortion instead of interrogating it and exposing it? Why do you create the, oh, there, there's no C, S, E, oh, we, no, 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 no. That's wrong because it's there. Explain that within, this is what steps we've taken. Mm. So that fear of LGBT, all those things, which are distortions, mm. deliberate, people putting out there, is out. Get civil society, get the right, all the society uh, groups to focus. Don't run away from it because it cannot be deleted. Mm. Our children need that if you want to change the name. Look, elsewhere, the argument is whether the name should be uh, sustained or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a debate out there. Some say, look, the sexuality element is worrying, mm. so let's change it. But that's the point. That's why I said, we've, we've been invited to come and interrogate mm -hmm. a non-issue, okay. seriously. Thank you. So now, Dr. Ahmad, the, 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 the question is, help us to understand some of the differences. For example, 
why was the Ministry of Education seeking to redefine or as it were delete and replace the particular phrase in that communication by the education service it has said that the phrase within the acceptable cultural values and norms of the Ghanaian society should be added to the third objective on page three so if you are looking at page three I want us I want you to help us let me read it again for, for perspective context it says the management of Ghana education service has studied the guidelines for comprehensive sexuality education in Ghana and has agreed that in order for the guidelines to be accepted for use in Ghana education service the phrase in bracket within the acceptable cultural values and norms of the Ghanaian society and codes should be added to the third objective on page three this is to ensure that the education given to our school populace will enable them make informed decisions without any negative influences furthermore management re requests to see the original signed copy of the foreword for the guidelines. What, what, what prompted this and what's the purpose? Thank you very much, Samson, mm. and good morning to your cherished um, listeners and viewers. I mean, if you look at this letter, it was addressed to the Executive Secretary of the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. Yes. Because um, as far as our... Um, it was addressed loss, to you. Yes, exactly. Mm. As far as our act... Education Act is concerned. The National Council for Curriculum and Assessment is a statutory body that regulates curriculum and assessment content in educational institutions in Ghana. So any document that finds itself in the school system must be assessed through a rigorous approval process and then a recommendation provided. Mm. So they wrote to us to express concerns with the, the, these guidelines which in itself clearly suggests that this is not a final document. Mm. All right. Now, what the Ghana Education Service um, sought to do is to state that the, um, the objective, the third objective of nurturing positive attitude and values and including open-mindedness and respect for self and others must be done within the context of our cultural and societal values so that at least you set parameters within which this open-mindedness and discussions around and judgmental attitude and sense of responsibility are located. And once you set that parameter, it then defines what your context of sexuality, comprehensive sexuality education really means. So that's the purpose. Mm. Now, so so just, just for a brief moment, <coughs> would you then agree or disagree with those who are so opposed that they didn't have this benefit? Like Kukui is saying, you ought to have tackled the issue frontally rather than deal with a distortion. So if I see this document, I am entitled to give the interpretation that has been given to it. You also came to the same understanding, which led to the ministry, the education service, writing to you and saying that we must provide a certain cultural context to our understanding of sexuality education. So can you blame them? Can you blame the clergy? Can you blame for our money and the rest for thinking the way they think about these guidelines? Well, I think that the, the most important thing is for us to recognize that, I mean, this is a, a draft document that is not finalized. What it means is that it's going through some process of, of review. Which is a draft and document? This, this document. It's not, a, it's, it's not a, an approved document. You mean this is a exactly. draft document? It's not an approved document. <laughs> yeah. No, many will not understand this. Yes, this is, this is not an approved document. Okay. This document is not approved, and it, the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment has not approved this document. When the Director General yes. of the Ghana Education Service was providing the foreword, he was under the impression that you are communicating now that this is a draft and not the document? Yes, exactly. That's why that is the most that is the most reason why it's written that certain you know um, 
insertion be made? Because it is, is not that, finalized. Is that an afterthought? Not at all. After, after, after the protest? Not or? at all. No, this, is, this, this issue came out just a couple of uh, weeks ago. Is, is, there anything, because, is there anything, forgive me, is there anything at all in this guideline that would tell me that this is a draft? So that when I read it, I don't come to the, you know, okay. um, the point and the state that the people who are angry are. The practice is that mm. Ghana Education Service, anytime they forward a document, mm. it is signed. So this document is guidelines for the Enhanced School Health Program. And you have the preface, forward, whatever you can call it, mm. um, signed by the then Director General, Jacob Ko. Okay. This document is called Guidelines for Pre Prevention of Pregnancy Among school Schoolgirls and Facilitation of Reentry re into schools, School After Childbirth. And in this document, um, yes, this document was also forwarded by Professor um, Kwesi Opokwamankwa, the current director general, is being signed. Okay. And the couple What you're F seeking to demonstrate is what? Um, what I'm, I seek to demonstrate mm. is that in Ghana Education Service, all their finalized documents are signed. Okay. And so any document that finds itself in the public, which is not signed, uh, clearly suggests that they have not agreed completely to the content and the document is not you know, ready to you're go saying, outside. You're saying that yeah. the culture in this sector is that you can spend so much money <laughs> of the taxpayers' money to do a book in this form, uh, it's a nice hard copy yeah. and is very bright. And that you do it this way, in fact, the pages are not ordinary paper, you know, copies. That you do this and this is draft. Yeah, this is a dummy. I'll show you. This is a yeah. dummy. Yeah, let me give you an example. Look at this, okay. this document. What do you see there? That's a curriculum. This, this mathematics curriculum for primary schools, basic one to three. That's a domain. of education, 20. If you hold it 19. now, you will see this is a, the original document. This is not the original document. Okay. See the final one. The final one we have, which is the final one in schools, mm. you have Ghana Education Service, Ministry of Education. Okay. And then you have the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment of Ministry of Education. See this. This is National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. Yeah. So that's the difference. That you can see here. OK. But the point I'm trying to no. Is it two, coming from At the top two, there's Ministry of Education. And you say here, we, we ought to have had that in the bracket. Exactly. So I'm, I'm trying to make a you point that, that this is not finalized. This is finalized. Fine. But exactly. this is coming that's from them. Both of them are coming from Yes, that's the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that... So this is signed? The, the, no, this is... I, I'm just trying to tell you mm. that you can have a, a dummy document in this form, mm -hmm. colored in the way you were just talking about. Okay. It's still dummy. The printers can print it uh, in a way that would... Would, would you can see when it's finalized so 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 that mm. if you have an no, issue uh, no you you give us a very significant point to determine what is a draft and what is exactly, a final one exactly. which first is that it's been signed yes so by, so, the, no. by the director general of the education exactly. service so i'm asking this mathematics example you are giving curriculum example you are yeah. giving this is a draft so we, we won't find it being signed you, no, the one that is finalized. This will document be has no signature at all. Okay. There are no issues on signature at all. But I'm just making the point that um, it is possible, I mean, as we do, when you finish, when a draft document is being printed, you can print a dummy one, which looks exactly like um, the original one. Mm. And, and once you are done, then you can you know, have the original one. And you one are outside. emphasizing yeah, that when what, you yeah. print it, yeah. you never suggest anywhere in. In the in the draft that it's a draft. No, this is not a finalized document because there that. are processes that I get have that. to go through. So we what gone what I'm that asking process. is that when I pick that document, there's nothing that will show me that it is draft. Because I'm looking at this until you, your explanation, <coughs> I won't take this to be a draft. This one too that uh, Farmoni and others are angry about, there is nothing in it that shows that it's a draft. 
So how, how do you do that? So that is why this document was actually not in the public domain. OK. Because we, it is not a final document. It, is, it has been there for over a year now. It is not in the public domain. Um, how it got out, you know, uh, is quite difficult okay, to understand. Just a minute. Just yeah. a minute. Let's hear Matthew Poku Prempe in February when he referred to this document. And let's see if he can help us to um, understand what he's saying, that they knew that this was a draft. Let's hear Matthew Poku Prempe in February, please. Let's hear him. The subject of sexuality education has become a very important matter, particularly for the youth in our societies. Indeed, the changing societal context, characterized by the free flow of information, media pluralism, and the social media, has necessitated the need for education systems to provide accurate information of sexual, sexuality education. We in Ghana have a guideline that I've shared with you that we see it is imperative if this nation should develop that sexuality education should be part of the curricula that we will launch this year in September all the way from kindergarten to senior high school. Okay, so his reference was that this was a guideline and he had shared it. Yes. And that we were going to have a new revised curriculum in September and that this ought to be part of it, correct? <coughs> did, did I understand him correctly? Yes, I think that okay. in, in so that communication. The, yes, in and, that and, com and as we speak, we're in September. So you are going to have work done on this before it is made part of the curriculum. Is that it? Exactly, which we haven't done yet. OK. All right. Please go ahead. All right. Mm. So um, the point I wanted to make is that there are processes towards development of curriculum materials. And over the last couple of months, we have been so much engaged in completing the curriculum, handing over to Ghana Education Service, and then implementing the curriculum training teachers and the rest. The other part of it are materials, what we call supplementary materials, that we'll have to look at, which we haven't looked at. And that's why we haven't come to, we, we haven't discussed this document in detail yet and, 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 and finalized. But I wanted to make the point that this whole CSC, you know, concept, as Mr. Bakun um, indicated, has been in the system for quite a very long time and that there has been funding for the, the CSC program. Indeed, the, as far back as 2014, 2014, so this is a letter from, if you look at this document that you are holding, the blue one. This one? Mm. Yes. Yeah, the 2015. Yeah, the adult yeah. recent one. Yeah. Mm. So you see that you have UK aid, Ghana Education Service, Ghana Health Service, Palladium, and the rest. Okay. This letter came from Palladium, mm. all right, dated 6th January 2017. And if you could permit, I want to read. The title says, um, the title says, the Ghana Health Service and Ghana Education Service Roundtable Discussion on Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health. And I read, further to the discussions and understanding reached on the above subject, so there has been some prior discussions. Mm. I write to formally invite your, your two institutions to a two-hour roundtable discussions on adolescent sexual and reproductive health. Right? Then I go to the next page, uh, paragraph. It reads, through the support of DFID, DFID is the Department for International uh, Development by United Kingdom government, UK. Yeah. So that's why you see UK there. Mm. Uh, through the support of the DFID, Ghana funded Ghana Adolescent Reproductive Health Project, and this is very important. Ghana Adolescent Reproductive Health Project being implemented by Palladium, and you can see Palladium there. The project has been working with both Ghana Health Service and Ghana Education Service to implement activities in support of adolescent health and development strategy, 2020 to 2015. And then it continues to say that under the, that project, several major policy reviews in support of adolescent health and development have been completed. Now, this is the very important point I want to make. For the in-school adolescents, Ghana Education Service continues in its effort to prepare adolescents and young people to become healthy and responsible adults. 
The GES has worked with Ghana Health Service and the National Population Council in these policy reviews on the pain by the Ministry of Education Strategic Plan. Now, the Education Strategic Plan is a broad policy document that guides the development of education policies in Ghana. So it means that this project takes its, its inspiration from the Education Strategic Plan itself. It is worth noting that the Ghana Education Service has a revised curriculum with integrated sexuality education rolled out from KG through to senior high school in all schools across the country since January. Right? Mm. So this is something that's been happening. But I just want to read the last portion, um, the third, but yes, the last paragraph of the letter. And it says, the roundtable discussions will delve into these issues for further identity for further, identif for further identify, uh, to further identify and help address potential gray areas that serve as bottleneck to the realization of the two agencies' common objectives in the promotion of school health program, including provision of comprehensive sexuality education. So, Comprehensive sexuality education has been in the extant literature of pub, rep, uh, adolescent reproductive health for, for some time. And indeed, it has come from several international um, imperatives. In fact, if you read the introduction of this document. That's a 2015 document. Yes, it says this. It says this. Some of these policies include the Ch Children's Act, the 1992 Constitution, the Ghana Shared Growth and development agenda, the Ministry of Education strategic plan, the National Population Policy 1994, the Adolescent Reproductive Health Policy, and the, the, the National Population Council is a custodian of the National uh, Adolescent uh, Reproductive Health Policy, and the International Conference on Population and Development. All right. If you go on the Government of Ghana website, I wish I can find this. Mm. On Ghana, Government of Ghana website, it makes mention of how far we have come in pro uh, promoting adolescent sexual reproductive health rights. Health rights. And this one, it includes rights. Okay. Therefore, There's, therefore. I, I am trying to establish a point okay. of our involvement in the development of comprehensive sexuality education. Okay. When I'm done, I will now want us to locate the definition of concept, uh, uh, comprehensive sexuality education. Yeah, I think we can, get, we can get to now, we can get to now, we can get to the, you taking us, locating us to the definition. Because there is no argument about how far we have come in seeking to develop, you know, to develop comprehensive uh, sexual, right. uh, sexuality education. You know, the arguments, those who are saying other things, will say that the 2015 document is very clear on its face. Mm. Even in the title, yeah. it says adolescent. This guideline you have introduced takes us from kindergarten and mentions the ages. All right. so, in this document, that's please, that's in that's this document, see. the target group, the target group mm. are teachers of first cycle and second first and second cycle institution. Yes, but, that's but, 2015. But the preface yes. yes. mm. has been yes. 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 The target yeah. is first and second cycle institutions. Okay. And first cycle institution begin from KG. Okay. So the but, teachers but who are being... Here, to, yeah. again, in the same 2015 document, the age at which the education begins yes. is 10. We have seen it here. Here, the age at which the education begins at paragraph page 10 at page 10 is preschool. So and I think we are clear about that, are we, we not? Yes, and what do you Which find Which is four there? to five uh, years. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you find, but, where but do you senior, find but there? Senior, just fair comment. Where, where do you, doc, yeah. doc, mm. just a minute. The Adolescent Sexual and uh, Reproductive Health, was this book approved by NACA? This, this book yeah. was developed no, no, and I mean, was it approved it's by once no, it's signed by Ghana Education Service? Signed. And at the time, we take it at the time, not at the time. Yeah. No, I just want to be clear. Okay, so there, was no there was no NACA. At the time, there was no There was no NACA. There was no NACA. There was no established NACA as an institution. It was, it was operating, but CRDD was operating mm. um, under the Ghana Education Service. And that's why you get CRDD in there. Okay. So, so now take us to the question I really ask you. What's about the definitions? 
I think that generally, the context that yes, you are seeking. I think that generally, we have mixed different con um, use the concept differently to mean something different for us. We have used adolescent reproductive health, and we have used comprehensive sexuality education to also mean adolescent reproductive health. That is the general, you know, understanding of CSE in our context, which is different from how CSE has been conceptualized in other contexts. And that's where people have been so much concerned because comprehensive sexuality education is a social construct. Mm. It's a social construct that has meaning depending on your context. And for example, um, if you want to define what an attitude is, everybody has a different understanding of what an attitude is. And therefore, if you want to use the term attitude, you then have to define what attitude is and can proceed from that angle. Uh, in this context, the CSC that we have been used to all these years are defined within a certain context that looks at our societal and cultural values, distinct from CSC in other contexts. And that's where people need to understand that. I give an example that social studies is a subject. A social studies taught in Ghana is different from social studies taught in America. Because in the social studies in America, they probably are looking at history of America and other stuff. Mm. And our context, we're looking at other things. And so comprehensive sexuality education, as is being used in, in these policy documents that you have seen, uh, are clearly uh, different from how people understand. Mm. Our, our challenge mm. with this document, and we've, uh, we've said it elsewhere, is that one, the document is not a finalized document. The Ghana Education Service has raised issues uh, with the document. The, there are issues that the, uh, the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment itself has also raised. For example, we have an issue with the definition itself mm. of what <laughs> CSE is. Where, where is this page? And if you look at it, and before I even read that, let mm. me look at page one. Mm. Page one reads, uh, the last paragraph says that, the term comprehensive sexuality education is used in many international guidelines. It continues. The terminology, however, has been received with mixed reactions in Ghana and some other countries, partly because of misconceptions, misconception that teaching young people anything related to sexuality will encourage them to have sex, despite the contrary research evidence from varied contexts. For the purposed guidelines, the term comprehensive sexual and reproductive health education has been adopted instead of CSE. And yet this document causes <laughs> guidelines for CSE. So in this document itself, it contests the name that has been given because of the controversies associated with the, the use of the term CSE, so that we do not fall into the pitfall of people conceptualizing CSE to mean the CSE in other contexts. And so this policy gu guideline itself, mm. which is yet to be finalized, clearly you know highlight where uh, what name should be should be called okay. so if it is to be finalized these areas um, including the definition as i mentioned so so i've mentioned the name itself we should we should reflect on the cover of it and then also the issue that the the Ghana education service raised regarding the objective because it is the objective um, through which the other aspects or every single uh, you know content of this, this material mm. is anchored on. Okay. Once you modify the objective, then you are modifying and shaping the context within which the content is located. Okay. Now let me also add that the issue we have had with the definition itself of, of comprehensive sexuality education. As I said, our understanding all these years has been the uh, information and services around reproductive health uh, you know, of, of, of young people. But this document defines CSE to mean a systematic approach to equip young people with the knowledge, skills, attitude, and values they need to determine and enjoy their sexuality. The challenge then is that in our context, we see our sexuality being predetermined. Being predetermined. And so if we are now defining um, CSE to mean people will now have the, the free will to determine their sexuality, then we, we, are, we are venturing into an area so, that is so an that, that brings, to our that brings up that brings up a major question they are asking. You say from this definition, you see that sexuality is predetermined. But for the primary six child, you are, you, are, you are saying that one of the modules 
module three, uh, session one, myself, being a male or female. The interpretation here is that you are seeking for people now to be taught to determine their sex. That and that's is, the problem. That is the point, um, ah, the point I'm making. But why, why no. are you reading into it? <laughs> no, this is deliberate. Not see, by him, mm, of course, but mm. generally. <laughs> let, let him explain because no, they are listening. No, he's they are okay, listening. He's yeah. an mm. opportunity to clear that. You see, the point we are making is that the the definition of it is what we have we've contested that. All right. Mm. So so once we um, once the document is subject to subjected to assessment, all these areas that we you know is being raised will be looked at. But the issue of gender and uh, maleness and the rest mm. have always been in our document, and it is in this document. Okay. Determining the gender and the rest is already in this document. Um, it talks about gender, gender neutrality, uh, and people here. with, okay. they are all here. But the point is that there are issues with these guidelines. There are clear issues with these guidelines. And that is why we have insisted that because uh, the, the document has not been finalized, and there are processes, the council is furious. Why is the council furious? Because per our regulations, once a document is submitted to us, there are certain procedures that we go through before it comes to the council for it to, ap to approve. Now, the council, made up of religious bodies like the, 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 the uh, Catholic Bishop Council, the Federation of Muslim Councils, the uh, Christian Council uh, representatives, uh, do not understand why there's a document like this which hasn't come before <coughs> it. And that's why I'm saying that, at, for as far as we are concerned, the document has not gone through our approval process. Mm. If it does, all these issues that we have raised would have would have been addressed. But okay. because it no, hasn't but, done, but, we but, haven't but, done so mm. because something mm. we need to be very you know uh, mm. sincere with ourselves. As we were working as an institution, our attention and focus has always been on completing the curriculum and then you know um, the associated textbooks. So attention on this, and this has been lying down since 2018. We haven't gone to it at, at all. Well, because we haven't, no, we we haven't gone into the development of supplementary materials. The um, resource pack here, and the curriculum framework, and let me make this, it's very important that we explain. Very briefly, but yes. I need to go for a break no, and return but, 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 to Perhaps, uh, perhaps, perhaps, want yes. to, perhaps, yeah, just mm. perhaps so we want to go and come back. Okay, ask, ask the question. Ask the question. Yes. Would you be kind to me, in February, 2019, yes. when the Honorable Minister told the UNESCO partners yes. that we have developed yeah. and shared the guideline, this was the guideline he was referring to. I, I cannot confirm, in all sincerity, I cannot confirm which, which guidelines, but I would think was. that, I should think <laughs> that, I should think that, it would make sense uh, if it was. Exactly. I, don't think we I, I, I cannot confirm, but I should think that he might have been but referring to this. Unfinalized. But, but, Yes. Yes. For yes. No, no, no. I mean, 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 to, to, to advocate and make clear is that the document did not go through the approval process and that is why up to now we haven't developed content yet. This is a guideline. When you see these guidelines... You haven't developed content. Exactly. And you are, you are organizing training for teachers. Who is organizing training for teachers? The, the training for the, ter for the 28th to the 30th of... 26th to the 30th of August. Who was so, that for? So Ghana Education Service, our understanding, and I think that the public must know the distinction between GES and NACA. Yeah. We operate as a regulatory body. We can ask Ghana Education Service to, um, um, to review some of the activities based on our recommendation. For example... They have already read no, taught the teachers or they, they have not taught the girls, the girls education no. to, teach the, to, teach, Please. to train the teachers to teach they these things. They have not trained teachers yet. That you have issues with. My understanding is that the girls education unit... unit. Um, Organize a, a, a program on the guide on, on aspect of these guidelines with coordinators of the school health education program. We have an issue with it. Why? Because 
the content of the curriculum. Until we complained yes. or people have complained now. You, you didn't tell anybody you have issues with anything. There's no evidence to show that you have expressed any reservations with really the approach to, to go ahead. The point is this. We have always, uh, in our engagement with Ghana Education Service, where necessary, collaborated. It is not everything. In fact, mm. if not this um, okay. conversation that came up, mm. we would not. I asked, somebody shared this with me. I said, how did this happen? I said, well, the girls' education unit, uh, you know, uh, organized some orientation for coordinators who are not teachers. They are coordinators. Because what we approved mm. uh, and spent resources on mm. across the country, you know, and trained 152,000 teachers from national to the school level, we never trained any single teacher on comprehensive sexuality education. Okay. Why then do we... I know later on, go and bring a few people okay, so, and train them on yeah. comprehensive Okay, so, so we'll take a break here. And when we return, we'll hear from Professor Audrey Gadjepo. And among the questions I want her to uh, begin by addressing to us is, we are saying in this document that we are going to teach children not to be judgmental on issues that have actually been outlawed by our own laws. Once the issue has been criminalize it means that's our collective policy on it why are we not supposed to be judgmental when it comes to them now that we are going to teach within the context we'll right of within the context of that okay. should be you welcome back this is news file and let's now hear Audrey uh, Gajepo. and the question i ask is what are they supposed to be tolerating? And why should they be tolerating, should they be taught to tolerate what may include what is criminalized? Yes. Thank you, yeah. um, Samson. And I'm yeah. not quite sure what you mean by what is criminalized, but let me just say a few preliminary things. Okay. I think it's clear from the conversation around this table that there are risks when things have not been finalized and they are linked in the public domain. There are risks when opinions take the place of fact. There are risks when there's mi deliberate misinformation. There are risks when issues that should not be politicized are politicized. And I think we should rescue all of that because really what lies at the heart of this? Mm. What lies at the heart of this is the question of what should our children know about sex and sexuality? Who should be telling them? At what level should they be introduced to what? That's what lies at the head, uh, at, the, at, the, at, at the bottom of all of this. And the education service is saying that as a place where more children spend time, mm. and because we are teaching children all kinds of values and life skills, we ought to be teaching them the facts of sex and sexuality. Their church, as you saw, thinks that they should. Mm. Eh? They think parents also should. And we need to ask our, uh, our, ourselves the question, who can, is it mutually exclusive to begin with? Because all these socializers can do it. The media does. But we also need to be clear what the facts are so that our children can protect themselves. So you're saying, back to your question, and I think you, you just... It, it is a bit of a mischievous question. And, and, no, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not that okay, interested. I'm going to deal with it very quickly. Right. And I'm not interested in it because there are real issues we should be debating. Mm. And the real issues is what do our children know about sex and how can they uh, protect themselves against the, the, the ravages of not knowing, of ignorance, uh, their health, HIV, AIDS, adolescent pregnant, uh, sexuality and pedophilia what are they so, being taught to be tolerant of so and not to be judgmental about yes but why are you narrowing it to the, what I, is I the want larger to know. issue i want to know what are they supposed I to be tolerant of and what are they I not do, to judge i do not know because i am not in the education service but when i read a document that says teach your children to be tolerant and not judgmental. The way I understand in the context it, of their sexuality. sexuality is to understand that there are different uh, ways in which people express sexuality. There are different ways 
uh, there are different people who have different cultural practices and values when it comes to sexuality. When you encounter those, you have to understand that it is within that context. Okay? Kweku has already said that tolerance also means you don't attack people because you happen not to agree with them. That's actually committing a crime. But it's not just about criminality. Mm. It's also about morality. If you do not agree with people, you do not attack them, even verbally, which may not be a crime. Because you have to respect people's differences. We're in a global world. We're in a global context. We have to teach our children mm. to be tolerant. We also have to teach our children that not everybody believes what they believe in. That's what we mean by tolerance. That's what we mean by not being judgmental. You can have your own values, mm. so, believe so, in so them, so and that. be strong yeah. in your so, mind so you about what it is. So, so that when you encounter, no, I'm not so allowing so you that to we, talk. So that, so that when for. you <laughs> yeah. allow, mm. so that when you meet somebody whose values including adults who should be protecting you, whose values seem to clash with yours, you can challenge them. Okay, so, so that, Prof, the, let's, I, be, I believe it is the core of the misunderstanding. When you say you're going to teach them maleness and femaleness, mm -hmm. what exactly are we talking about? When you say you're going to teach them to tolerate and not to be judgmental about certain things about their sexuality. What exactly is it? You say people have a different way of expressing their sexuality. What are these different ways of expressing sexuality that people must be taught to not judge and to tolerate? When I read the document and it says male and female and even gender, what I understand is to be able to explain to your children that this is not only biology that makes you a woman or a man. It is nature also that prescribes what roles and how you express those roles. Okay. So I think that there's a whole gamut. And I'm not going to prejudge, and I'm not in the education service. I wasn't part of this. Yeah. And I'm not interested mm. in being pinned down to certain things and being as presumptuous as Moses Fuamwani is he uh, interpreting the document himself and narrowing this very important debate to an issue of homosexuality because he thinks that we live in a society that is afraid of homosexuality. It doesn't help the because debate. Because that group Be is capturing a certain segment of society they have and they are very aggressive. Okay, Samson. But they have narrowed a whole comprehensive, important yeah. discussion yes. to homosexuality. It's not helpful to anybody, to our debate, to uh, 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 our informed uh, uh, minds, and it does not allow us to deal with what I call the clear and present danger. And do you know what that clear and present danger is? It's pedophilia. All the stories I have heard this week on your network, most of the things I read in the newspapers that have border on sexuality, and sex, and why we need uh, uh, sexual um, education of a comprehensive um, nature is because adults are preying on children. That's my interpretation. Mm. And why aren't we talking about that clear and present danger, which this will cure? Why are we wanting to shift this whole debate into that narrow pigeonhole of homosexuality, which is not our clear and present danger, even if we don't like it. The NACA itself says it is not comfortable. It has with problems aspects. with portions of this document. That's fine. Let them deal with it. I don't have a problem. Let them deal with it. I don't know what, what parts they are not uh, uh, comfortable with. But I think it's in their right. Mm. Like they say, it has to be within our cultural context. So what are we comfortable with? discussing with our children and at what level they have to clarify it and let us know. So I don't when the education a... service itself yeah. says it has problems mm -hmm. and is calling on the NACA to ensure in the objectives, a setting introduction of what is acceptable within the cultural values, mm -hmm. can you blame those who have issues reading between the, the lines in these? Be yes, in the first place? because the fact that people have concerns doesn't mean that you need to fill in that blank 
and narrow down the debate. I beg you, let's not narrow down the debate. The prefaces in all of these documents have, and the letter that you read mm. says it has to be within our cultural values. Right. But we are not even quite sure what our cultural values are. <laughs> I heard uh, uh, Moses talking about uh, puberty rights and all of that. Ask him, has he done puberty rights for his children? <laughs> do ha, have any of us here in this room done? Do we know what our puberty rights are within our culture? Let's not kid ourselves. Let's be realistic. What should we be dealing with? Mm. And there's no question in my mind that in there is a place in our education system to deal with some of the thorny issues. Mm. You disagree with the church leaders who are saying it should be left to uh, parents and the church? Parents, if I ask around this room again, how many of you did your parents ask? Did our parents have that talk with? I am sure that almost 100%, maybe 90% mm. of us will say we've never had any sex education from our parents. And if I were to ask you, have you given your children any sex education? I don't know what you say to me. I have. And at a very early age, and mm. I think I made the right choice. Okay. But a lot of parents are uncomfortable dealing with it. And so how do children learn about sex? They learn about it from their peers. They learn about it from the media, which is a key socializing institution. And by the way, in today's world and with social media, the children are going to learn about that which is a taboo in this country, which is homosexuality. The children are going to learn about it. In fact, they already know. Mm. I just don't know at what age they know. But I, I, I can assure you that a lot of children in this country know. And perhaps a few of them may be prey to homosexuals at a tender age, and they don't even know what to make of it. Okay. We talk about it not being uh, our culture. And I've always wanted people to explain to me, what does the phenomenon of supi, which is accepted and prevalent in secondary schools, mean? And it's how prevalent might we or accepted in, in secondary schools? It's prevalent schools. and accepted. Accepted? Well, hmm. people practice it all of the time. Why no, is it being rooted accepted. out? Some of us saw nothing wrong with it when we were in school. There you I go. thought Thank woman you. to woman mm. was not that offensive like man to man. Thank you. I grew no, up thinking it, that we But it is well, also from the point of ignorance, for instance, of our law. Relative to the no, standards. But to say it's accepted, accepted, I think, if I think that's, that's, that's a big Then there's yeah, specific yeah, criminalization yeah, yeah, yeah. of sin. Then in the person of ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no criminalization about man to man. That, yeah. <laughs> there is no criminalization is the, the in it. The mm. intercourse that, that, that is criminalized. The act yeah. of sodomy. So if you, mm. male, mm. have sodomy with a female, it's also criminalized. It's not only male okay. to male that, well, in that, our sex accurate. that is criminalized. Yeah, that's accurate. Mm. It that's is, if it's it is unnatural. That, it is the yeah, act yes. unnatural. of unnatural. So if you have oral sex and it's defined as unnatural carnal knowledge, whether you're a man or a woman doing it to a woman and a woman or a man and a man or a man to a woman, it's all, we are in the same boat. But, but, no, I mean, but I'll get out of this boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. No, technically, no. <laughs> technically, legally, mm -hmm. our law appears to have omitted Les yeah. lesbianism. That's right. Because the definition of mm. unnatural carnal knowledge does not include penetration. lesbianism. Mm -hmm. Unnatural carnal knowledge is penal penetration Without of a vagina. Yeah. Thank you very much for clarifying that because it makes my point that what is it that we want our children to know if it is about crime, then we, should, we would not be addressing mm. supi with our children. And as you said, it's not accepted. So what, if it's not what accepted, would you say they should listen, be doing? listen, mm. if it's not accepted, but mm. it's prevalent, mm. what conversation should we be having with our children okay. if it is against our moral values? So how do we resolve all of this to avoid using, as we, we seem to suggest, a confusion to throw an important thing you know, away. The way to resolve this, and it's not an easy resolution, it's not a comfortable resolution, is to do exactly what the ministry, of uh, the Ghana Education Service is seeking to do, mm. eh? is to start to have open conversations about sexuality, because if you don't have it, if there are taboo subjects, including homosexuality, the silence is bad. 
because the fact that you don't talk about it doesn't mean it's not happening. And doesn't mean that, you know, your children don't know about it. We have to want to know what do our children know. And I think that there are baseline studies that academics have done, and maybe the Ghana Education Service should also do more studies to see at what age do children know and learn about sex. We live in cultural settings where parents live in one bedroom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> parents and children are in one yeah. room. Or the walls yeah. are thin. Mm. You think that from age four, that child doesn't know about sex? I dare say they do. But what do they know? And shouldn't we teach them how to understand it in a healthy manner mm. and importantly, to postpone sex until they are old enough to deal with it? If we bury our heads in the sun, it's not going to happen. What are you doing going forward? So you have instructions to revise certain portions and to now incorporate this into the curriculum, right? Yes, yeah, so <coughs> that's where you are. So what we have now is that the document has to be submitted for assessment. Um, DS has raised concern in aspect of it. In assessment, what we do is that each book ha has three assessors. All of them look through with you know, different benchmark and issues to look at. And then they bring a recommendation. Based on the recommendation, uh, we then write to the originators of the document and say, this is what we, our position is, and these are the areas that you should um, um, look at. Mm. Now, once we approve that, once that is done, corrections are made, Ghana Education Service, you know, content areas that they have requested are included. Um, we so then the president is going to meet with religious body, um, the religious organizations yeah. and states, a position of the state, of the government. That will be included in what you will do eventually, right? Exactly. I mean, because what we do is that we, uh, be, uh, before so a document becomes a policy. all of this have been done, but for the alarm that's been raised? All of this would have been done because there are processes. That's why I'm saying this document has been there over a year. We haven't okay. touched it. Okay. The letters that uh, Mr. Baku read, mm. remember there was a first letter. Mm. The same letter was repeated because there's no response. Because at that time, okay. we're so much, you know, busy and deeply engrossed in finishing the curriculum and then also... The curriculum that was slated to be finished in September. Yes, and but, 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 but the letters that you are seeing came in April. And remember that the, we handed over the curriculum to Ghana Education Service in April, and then we had a plan of training teachers across the country. So <coughs> all this while, the attention has been on the training of teachers and then on textbooks. These are what we call supplementary reading materials. And therefore, after we've dealt with the textbooks, then all other materials, including mm. this, have to be looked at. Okay. Now, this is not a content itself. This is a framework, a parameters within which everything on sexuality education mm. should be located. Once this is approved, then the um, agency or any agency which wants okay. to develop content will now develop content so, so itself we'll wait, we'll and submit the content to Ghana we'll to to again. How, so can how, we how the books in the instructions? There is no books we'll with teachers. See how in the instructions, there is no single book. You will, you will, you will, you will, you will instruct the teachers. No single book. You will instruct the teachers to deal with the aspect of no uh, single book using the system. You no say, we, we sorry, to, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm saying that we ought to wait to see how in the instructions Absolutely. you will be elaborate about how to teach about there's masturbation there, right? <laughs> there are all those things there. Here. Yeah. How to use, uh, Kweku was reading through them. Masturbation, uh, well, uh, I don't, I don't uh, know if it's also okay. there. This it could be there. But you see, I there's a the reason I was saying yeah. this 2015, yeah. this 2018 uh, is a summary of 20. Uh, uh, Not 15. exactly. Okay, but thank you. Yeah, okay. These are two different elements. documents. This is that. a content and source book. Yeah. And this is a framework. Okay. Okay. Out of this framework, a right. content will be developed. And okay. that content will have to come okay. to NACA yeah. for assessment. But this is a source book. Yeah. This is a content that is, is being used in the school system. So the, the mention of uh, no masturbation, oral, no, no, this, oral, this, this sex, one, oral sex, and all of that, all of that will not be part of the comprehensive sexuality education. I'm All of that will that, not be in there. Please, can I make a, an important okay, point? I, Just I, an important I, point. I have to end this here, but I have Moses Fuamuni on the line. Uh, thank you for joining us, sir. Why? I think you should be... Why? Sorry? Hello? Yeah. Why? 
Good morning, Mr. Farmani. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, good, good. Okay, so briefly, we want to hear you. Um, it, 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 say, don't say briefly. My name has been mentioned. Uh, I think I said, I you're going to say, how are you doing, senior? Oh, okay, okay. Good morning, senior. Instead of say, good morning, senior. <laughs> okay, so, so. Okay, so how do we go forward from here? How do we go forward from here? Correct. Thank you. Uh, Audrey, you're a good friend of mine, uh, but I'm a bit disappointed. You know, I find the things that, first of all, what have you had me say that you are saying I have, you know, that you repeat what you said, because some people have been calling me, I didn't hear exactly what you said. You mentioned my name. Exactly. Did you say? I don't understand this. Can you hear me? Um, okay, so your line two is not really helping us. Let's see if we can we can get him back uh, on a better line. Uh, but thank you very much. Um, make your this final point, and then final we, point we end is this: mm. that the in the teacher resource pack contains a word se comprehensive sexuality education. Mm -hmm. That word there is to highlight the fact that in the curriculum framework there are contemporary issues that the curriculum framework has highlighted, and the summary of them have been brought here that the curriculum framework has highlighted these issues, but there is no content on comprehensive sexuality education. And that's why no single person has been able to point to the content itself that this content is comprehensive sexuality mm. education. Yes, you say because we should we ignore not, all the PPAG exactly, because materials. Because we have not developed okay. the content. Mm. The, uh, the literacy program, if you are going to teach comprehensive sexuality education, you don't introduce it in literacy program. Okay. You don't int introduce it in English or Ghanaian language. But in a Ghanaian language, preamble, mm. it says that you can look for supplementary materials okay. on comprehensive sexuality education, which are yet to be developed. All right. And so as far as this curriculum is concerned, mm. and looking at the curriculum framework, we have not developed anything on comprehensive sexuality education. Okay. What is already in the system is what we are trying to up, uh, improve. This document found itself in the system. There were clubs, clubs, you know, set up in secondary schools in Brongahafu, funded by David with 19 million pounds sterling for this particular 15, 2015 project, which you know, introduce comprehensive sexuality education into the Ghanaian, you know, right. extant literature. Okay, thank you. Let's not really us. argue the whole thing. But we're looking for the way forward. And uh, I suppose uh, you have clearly uh, stated that. And Audrey has also given up the policy makers, uh, duty bearers. And the president is going to speak with the religious bodies. I'm sure that you're taking some, um, you know, insights. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.